subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here all that We have with us Mr. Harish Bajur, Brand Guru, Brand and Business Strategy Specialist, owner at Harish Bajur Consults uh, Inc. In conversation with us. Welcome to the show, Harish. It's a pleasure to have you as well at uh, such a time. Uh, Harish, my first question coming to you is. Currently, the kind of situation that we have been facing, it's an, uh, you know, facing, it's an unprecedented times on the back of COVID. And what's happening is a lot of developing countries are trying to get out there and create a brand for themselves, because this is the time where everyone wants to go out and say, hey, we have survived and we are here to support you. What is your view on what we as a country are creating of Brand India? And what do you think of Brand Modi that he's trying to get out and give in in the open? OK, uh, see, firstly, I do believe uh, that uh, Brand Modi is uh, a very big brand as far as the global uh, set of uh, not only Indians, not only the diaspora of Indians all across the world, uh, but even as a world citizen. So I think uh, Brand Modi um, is really possibly a brand ambassador for Brand India. Uh, and I think, you know, it's uh, working at this point of time. Uh, brand India per se, I think, you know, our imagery is uh, twofold. We have an imagery which is intrinsic within the country. What do people within India think of India? And the second is extrinsic. You know, what do people who are outside the boundaries of India, what do they think about India? So there's enough research going on around in this space. And I do believe these are challenging times. India is very, very stressed. Our economy is under acute stress. Our people are under stress. Uh, I think we need to stand up and tell the world that we are as resilient as anyone else out there. Absolutely. You know, a very valid point, Harish, that you've made. And the reason I ask you this question is also because what's happening is on the export front, as a country, India has always been getting that image of, say, a back office hub. Slowly, steadily, now what India wants to do is change that image from a back office hub to a manufacturing hub. And for that, we clearly needed to compete with China. Now that people are probably hesitant to get to China, they want to shift focus and probably say, come to, come to India, come to Bangladesh, say Taiwan, Vietnam. These are different locations which you know, the companies are moving base to. Taking this into consideration, do you think it's going to be easy for India to shift that image of a back office hub to a manufacturing hub? Well, this is a tough one because I don't think India is ready as yet for this. Uh, because uh, essentially, if you really look at what we've been successful with, and particularly if you look at our exports, mm. uh, and particularly if you look at what's robust, you will suddenly see that, you know, we are very, very services centric. Correct. Uh, we are not product centric, we are services centric. Now, services centric, I mean, one of the big names that comes out is SaaS. Software as a service is something that has brought in valuable revenue into this country. So the back office hub of India, starting in the old days from being the, uh, you know, uh, transcriptioners for medical mm. transcription companies, climbing up to become BPOs, BPOs becoming KPOs, and uh, then coming in, you know, software as a service. Uh, but products, I think that's the big question mark. We have yet to crack the product code in India. And this goes not only in the space of tech, uh, but it certainly goes in the space of brick and mortar ventures as well. Uh, because we are terrific at exposing, exporting commodities, uh, but we are still not as good at exporting brands. Yes, the private sector has done some human piece of work. We have auto companies in India which have been exporting. We have, you know, two-wheeler companies in India which have been exporting. 
cycle companies in India which have been exporting and uh, bringing a good name for India. But uh, these are far and few. Mm. When you look at gross numbers, uh, there is an issue out here. Uh, our net uh, import bill versus our next net export, uh, I think we do have an issue out there as it is. In terms of sheer volume, we might be exporting a lot, but in terms of value, uh, the value of export seems to be small. So China is still the big bogey out there. And take it from me, it's not easy to fight that battle mm -hmm. uh, because you're not ready as yet. Right. So, you know, do you think it's important to create an image strong enough within? And once you do that, then move out to cross the waters? Because right now we are very much on a very strong footing. And it's a very strong, probably, uh, you know, a connotation to say, vocal for local, Atmanirbhar India, self-reliant India. These are strong words. Now, do you think if we try to prove ourselves on the domestic front, it'll be easy to cross the waters? Uh, you know, the prime minister of this country, Mr. Modi, has given us a lot of weaponry. Mm. Uh, but it's extremely important for the people to use this weaponry, for the private sector to use this weaponry, just as the public sector needs to use this weaponry. Mm. Uh, the problem is that we have some brilliant sets of ideas and thoughts, but when they hit the road, they just don't seem to be running as fast as these ideas are expected to run. And therefore, the key issue is that we have some vocal for local is a very, very strong uh, terminology, and it can actually do big things over a period of time for the country. Uh, substituting imports, mm -hmm. n numbers of them, with local effort. I mean, there's plenty of stuff around, particularly post COVID with all the tensions going around. Uh, the world is becoming insular. Every country wants to do its own things. Every country might want to stay by local and stay local. Uh, but again, you know, the key question is how fast these activities are hitting the road. Mm. So I am a brand person, uh, but I don't believe in image. Uh, I do believe image must be preceded by solid work. Mm. The solidity of an action is more important than the image that you build around. So right. whenever I look at branding, half the time I keep saying that don't build an image and then build the product. Build the product first, build the action first, build the success first, and then build the image uh, that will fit into place. Image is the last thing that we need to cap mm. ourselves it's not the first thing to cap ourselves with. Right. So, you know, for a country like India, you know, as you mentioned, image is the last thing that we need to create. The trend that we see, yes, you know, probably brands like, say, an ITC or an HUL, these have been companies who've created a brand, created an image, say, probably over decades. Now what's happened is, the time taken to create a brand has shrunk. The moment a brand or a product receives investments, it's assumed in India that yes, it's a brand. A brand has been created. And probably that's the misconception we have because the, the sustainability of the brand, the shelf life of the brand is really short-lived because the moment the funds stop flowing in, that's when you see the brand dying out. And that's what we've been witnessing, at least in this MSME, in this startup world. What would you have to say about it? Uh, this is the point that I was leading with at this point of time, because, you know, image is not important. The solidity mm. of the brand is more important. So if you look at it, I think, you know, in India, within India, we have a make in India, made in India companies, sets of companies, which are brilliant companies. Mm. Okay. Um, and, and these are big companies and they're all very good companies. I mean, take Parley Biscuits, for instance, possibly one of the finest biscuit companies in the world Correct. in terms of range, in terms of weight, in terms of quality, mm -hmm. and quality continued from whenever, the 1920s, uh, right up to now. Uh, this goes not only in that, it goes into auto space, it goes into n numbers of other spaces. We have great companies. We have ITC, which is uh, a classic company out there, um, you know, multifarious sets of activities and really world-class companies. Correct. 
Uh, but the point is that, you know, how, how can scale be achieved larger than what we already have? How can we take this to every vertical there is? Uh, India's success with brands must not be anecdotal with stuff that you can count on your fingers, but it should be millions of successes. You know, we are a nation of entrepreneurs, and I think we need entrepreneurial success to lead the way and take us to the next step. And that's why I'm very excited about the startup movement in this country, mm -hmm. uh, which actually is causing for new unicorns to happen possibly global models which will get replicated all across the world. We've had some good examples, but then, you know, they've floundered as well. OYO is a classic example, but, you know, the environment itself made it flounder to that extent at this point of time. But um, uh, uh, an OLA could have been an example, you know, and, and numbers of them. So I think it's a question of saying, taking the Desi Indian model and taking it out into the great big global market, making it a hit, making it indispensable for this global audience to use something that's Indian. That is the ultimate test of brand India. Right, and, and Harish, with this, what's happening is, everyone's thought that consumption behavior has changed on the back of COVID. However, one thing that I noticed, at least on ground was, the retail pickup was fabulous. Retailers, your Kirana stores, I mean, have been of the opinion that they've not done this kind of business in the last 10 years. So the consumption on the retail front in terms of households has gone up and people have continued consuming what they did. Yes, probably due to unavailability, due to supply chain disruptions, they would have shifted brands. However, how have you seen this entire phrase from March to now in terms of the disruptions that it has caused, especially in supply chain, especially in terms of consumer preferences? Well, uh, COVID-19, the pandemic itself, is what uh, I, one would typically call an act of God kind of a disruption. Uh, disruptions can be of many kinds. You can disrupt a business, mm -hmm. which means that it's interventionist uh, as a disruption or, uh, you know, the business itself can disrupt itself because of market changes or an act of God. This is an act of God disruption. Mm. If you look at retail, yes, we have gained tremendously in retail. Uh, but, you know, we need to uh, wonder about it and ponder about it for a period of time. Because please look at retail. Mm. Retail is not as simplistic as it seems at this point Correct. in time. What's done beautifully is retail, which is, you know, uh, basic fundamental retail. The roti, Correct. kapada, makan kind of a retail. With the festival season coming in, we will climb about from into telecom and into uh, home products, etc. But the disruption that we have seen has actually done one thing. It's actually ensured that we have become very, very home-centric. Mm. We have become indoor-centric. So I keep saying, you know, in the old days, we used to have this... Uh, uh, terminology, when a young man or a woman would step out into the world, his father or mother or grandfather, grandmother would say, hey, the world is your oyster. Go out and conquer the world. I changed that during COVID and I said that the oyster is your world. The world is not your oyster. The mm. oyster is your world. And the oyster is your home. The home you live in is where you survive. So retail that comes into the home it's doing beautifully. Mm. Ask me, what's the one big consumer change that has occurred? The one big consumer change that's occurred is staying at home and consuming everything that's needed. But the point we need to remember is when you stay at home and consume what you consume within the home, everything is not important, but mm -hmm. some things are important. And those some things seem to be the basics. And therefore, from a very advanced, high-tech, mm. non-needed, non-wanted kind mm. of category even, we've come down to basic needs, basic wants, basic desires, and basic, uh, you know, uh, aspirations as a market. One other point is that COVID, the pandemic, in fact, I keep saying that, you know, Osama bin Laden, actually cascaded the entire business for the security industry in the world mm. because everyone wanted to be secure. Osama bin Laden did that to the security products and security services industry. 
Corona actually has done the same thing to mm -hmm. the hygiene and the health services kind of industry in this country. So we are very, very hygiene centric now. We have become careful. We want everything coming into the home. We want to be masked in our entire existence. And this masking of the entire businesses that we are looking at is bringing down the value of the business to a lower level than it was in the older pre-COVID days. Right. So do you think it's caused a shock to loyalty and that's what is giving opportunities to newer brands as well? Uh, well, you know, loyalties do exist, but then, you know, a lot of people are saying that, hey, listen, if I have less money in hand, must I buy lesser priced products? Mm. Okay. And therefore, loyalty goes out of the window. And that's one of the reasons that within the Indian context, you'll see a lot of premium product companies, they've not raised their prices, which is normal mm. temptation to do every financial year. Secondly, they've cut down by their prices by 20%. Premiums mm. are down. Because everybody knows that when an economy is stressed, and this is a stressed economy we are living in, people tend to want to buy things which are cheaper. Two things are occurring. One, people are downgrading from the top rung products to the next rung product. So I go to buy a toothpaste, possibly from a premium toothpaste to a popular toothpaste, I jump. Second thing happening is people are reducing usage in the sense that People are saying that instead of using so much of toothpaste, should I use half of it? Will my toothpaste run twice as fast? So these are two basic things that are occurring. And the third thing that's occurring is also the fact to say, can I postpone purchase? I have a refrigerator at home. It is about six years old. I wanted to replace it this Diwali. Can I run it for another two years? Anyway, nothing's going wrong with the refrigerator. It's got a Kelvinator compressor. And that's what will run on and on. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of saying three things. And these three things suppress uh, the trends in an economy, the value trends in an economy. So my worry is the value trends of the economy. Mm -hmm. I'm just out of a study. And this is the last point I'd like to make on this question. Just out of a study, we've covered some 27,000 and odd households in, mm -hmm. in India, gone to big cities, tier two towns and villages. And we have tried to understand what's happening out here. Guess what? One, I'm just going to share one mm -hmm. data because it's a proprietary piece of data. One data simply says that, hey, during the COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. the total value of money that is coming into the house has gone down by 41%, wow. which means that in the old days I was earning, getting 100 rupees in, mm -hmm. it's down by 41. Correct. But the beauty of it is, this is income. We checked out expenditure. And guess what? We checked that expenditure has also come down because we are not going out to those hotels and discotheques and pubs Correct. and uh, spending as much, not buying clothes, uh, cars, etc. So it's come down to 25%. So keep two numbers in mind. 41% is the depression income. of income. 27% is the depression of expenditure, mm -hmm. which means that we still have 15% more money in hand. Okay, And that is the good news. And that good news is what marketeers should leverage. Right. And, and taking, you know, this is a very interesting point, uh, Harish, that you've made as well. So if you could just help me understand, how should brands function from here on? Because what's happened is earlier it was always about competition. Now you see a lot of piggybacking that happens. So do you think brands are understanding that this is the time to have co-opetition versus competition to grow? Well, brands have decided that, you know, in tough times, we have to take a look at every vehicle that is available and try to combine together. So you have had competition models. Uh, we have had, uh, you know, the food delivery guys linking up with the uh, auto aggregator, car aggregator, et cetera, et cetera. But I think these are temporary measures. Mm -hmm. At the moment the lockdown is lifted in completeness and the moment that everybody feels that we have to survive for ourselves, the co-opetition model will go. Mm. In tough times, co-opetition becomes a norm, but when normal times, co-opetition actually 
uh, fizzles out and gets back into a situation mm -hmm. of saying to each their own. Right. And then with this, what happened is during the lockdown, because the, every brand assumed that spends will be less, revenues will be less, let's cut down on our advertising marketing budgets. However, there were a few smart brands which did try to put in, say, one-tenth of the money in terms of branding, marketing, advertising, where the results were probably 10x. Do you think that was the model to be adopted or do you think it was best to stay away because the costs had gone down? Okay, uh, to every client that I have been working with, with uh, you know whatever number of clients that I work with and with uh, to investors, I work a fair bit with investment oriented companies in India and I have told every one of them one thing, that, hey, listen, guys, conserve advertising money in the initial months. Mm. So I started saying this on the 2nd of April uh, 2020, if I remember mm. right. And I made everybody conserve advertising money and said, hold back. Because when the times are tough, mm. when it's a fearful time in the economy, people are not listening. They're only mm. listening to the pandemic. They're not listening to happy messaging. So I pulled out every happy messaging out of the market. Mm. I stopped many investments which were past the due diligence stages with the uh, VCs that we are talking about. Fundamentally to say that shrink back and wait and watch. Mm. Uh, I said we must resume advertising and this resumption of advertising started in the month of September because okay. I said, yes, I think this is the time when people have gone through the fear cycle, have got adjusted to the COVID pandemic, mm. are, are reasonably philosophical about the COVID pandemic, and they're saying we need to return to life as normal. And uh, the government also is saying the same thing. Let's go and try and start advertising. But again, that advertising had to be palliative advertising. It should not be this buy, buy, buy mm. kind of advertising which was going on. And therefore, palliative advertising, you saw a lot of that happen. Mm. Just as the IPL 2020 began, that's when the slightly more celebratory advertising is coming in. And I think I had planned this uh, accordingly with the sets of clients that I'm speaking about, where we said we must take a back seat when the consumer is pushed. And we can take a center seat when the consumer is slightly okay and take a front seat only when the consumer is happy once again in a celebratory economy. We are still not there. Right. So, you know, when you say we are still not there, and even if we start, if you advise brands, if you advise corporates to start releasing their budgets now, what is the kind of shift that you're seeing in terms of patterns? Because what's happening is right now, again, digital marketing is picking up pace. It has continued. But I think it seems it's overdone because there's a lot of bombardment that's happening on that front. And one thing is that the credibility that television, radio, newspaper holds, that credibility is still missing with regards to where digital marketing goes. Do you still see this phenomenon? Because clearly budgets have slowly, suddenly seen an upward curve on the digital marketing front. Well, uh, the digital horse has bolted. Okay, if you really look at it, uh, digital occupies as much as 31% of the advertising pie of India at this point of time. Mm. If you go back and cascade back to five years, <clears throat> we are talking about 2% digital and 98% physical. Now mm. it's 31, 69. Give so it another we... two years, it's going to go to 50, 50. But is this so on the you... volume terms, are we saying, or on the revenue side? Value. The value, value, value. value. Okay. I'm not hmm. really talking value. Hmm. So volume is much higher because volume of digital is hmm. possibly a factor of 46 on okay. the volume of physical. So hmm. if you really look at the fact that that much of expenditure is going into digital, it simply hmm. is the same thing. I mean, you know, COVID has forced everybody to think digital in a big hmm. way. You work in a digital format. You and I are interviewing with one another on digital hmm. format. It's not physical anymore. Your cameraman is not here, et cetera, et cetera. Everything that you and I do, we're doing uh, digital. The kind of spends 
the kind of money that I'm spending on UPI now has uh, grossed uh, phenomenal numbers all of a sudden. A Paytm is recording humongous numbers. A Swiggy mm. is recording food deliveries being in big numbers, like a Zomato is. Uh, E-commerce companies and Amazon and a Flipkart are doing exceedingly well with home yeah. deliveries much before. And cash on delivery, which was a format on in the old days, is today digital money because mm. everybody is paying digital. So the faith in digital has gone crazy. This also means that digital advertising is coming back. However, one of the key issues is the fact that digital is not as trusted as physical is. But you know, over a period of time, even this shall pass. So I think the digital horse has bolted and I think COVID has been one of the biggest injections the digital movement in India has got. Right. So, you know, when we talk about digital India from here on as well, the way in terms of television, radio, we have, I mean, television has BARC, or there are governing bodies for the other, you know, other mediums. Advertising with regards to where digital is concerned, the the way you quantify it, the way it's been regulated, do you think a body for the same is needed? It is needed, but I can't think what kind of a body it will be. Because digital is an anarchy, mm. uh, whereas physical is, uh, is a slightly more organized democracy. So between the democratic medium of physical versus the anarchic movement of uh, uh, digital, it's going to be very difficult to control what happens out there. Mm. And um, I think regulation, yes, it will come at a point of time. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, if the horse has bolted, it's bolted. Right, absolutely. I think, and that's something that everyone as a brand is looking forward to as well. Thank you, Harish. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us on the show. It was a pleasure to speak to you. Great insights. And I hope you enjoyed the discussion as well. And we hope to see you back soon again. And stay safe. Thank you. Pleasure being with you. Bye.